When Delaware won $119 million in federal race to the top money back in March 2010, the goal was to make Delaware schools world class. Nearly four years later, with the majority of the money spent, are Delaware schools any better off? With help from Delaware Today magazine, we try to answer that question. Supporters and critics agree it's too soon to tell whether Race to the Top was a success or a failure. Where they disagree is whether they think Delaware is on the right track. I would say it's a success in terms of the initial intent, which was to serve as a catalyst for transforming the system. Paul Herdman is a founding member of Vision 2015, a coalition of education, business and government leaders with its own reform plan for Delaware schools. Vision 2015 helped the state win the 119 million federal dollars. Money that went towards improving poorly performing schools known as partnership zone schools, improving early education programs, as well as towards a controversial teacher evaluation program. I think the purpose was uh, to look at Delaware and say, could there be some dramatic transformational change? How we do business in terms of how teachers work together, what standards we set for our kids, for adults in the system. And I think all of that uh, has happened. From a return on investment standpoint, I don't think that we're getting quite the return that we envisioned. John Young is a member of the Christina School Board, as well as an outspoken critic of many of the state's education initiatives, including Race at the Top, initiatives he describes as overly reliant on test scores and assessments. I would have taken the money and gone after a much more comprehensive attack on social supports uh, rather than investing in testing. It's hard to learn when, you, when you're hungry. To leap over all of that and to rely on a test score to then tell me how a school is doing just doesn't make sense to me. Critics like Young also point out national and state test scores have remained largely flat since the state started drawing from its race to the top pot, adding the same can be said for achievement gap numbers and graduation rates. I don't want to sugarcoat the fact that uh, because there's been this catalytic change and it's, and it's taking a while to kind of fully be realized that uh, it's been a magic, magic bullet or magic wand and sort of everything has disappeared. Um, but the reality is that uh, there are significant changes for real kids. Herdman says in the last couple of years, 10,000 more kids are now proficient in reading and math, according to Delaware's latest assessment test results. That's a massive shift in two years. It's very hard uh, I think, to, to quickly measure these programs. Former Delaware Congressman Mike Castle was in Washington, D.C. when No Child Left Behind became the education standard and when Race to the Top was introduced. So you can give money in a Race to the Top for four years, but I, I think until you, a few more years have gone on, it's very difficult to determine, did this really help uh, or, or, or not? America's been throwing reforms at schools now almost nonstop for 30 years, and we never give them time to, to work before we decide that they failed and we have to move on to the, the next one. The question is, are we there yet? No. Uh, are we on the right track? Yes. The state has asked and the federal government is considering granting Delaware an extension, a fifth year to spend any unused race to the top money. Joining me now is Delaware Today Editor-in-Chief Maria Hess. Maria, so good to see you. So good to be here as always. Happy New Year. Same to you. You know, I just barely scratched the surface in my story, but for your piece, you guys really went in depth and Drew did a great job, but yes. is that, did you know that going into this story? Interesting question. <laughs> uh, Drew Ostrowski, I must give all credit to Drew because uh, he really, really did his homework on mm -hmm. this. Lots and lots of research. Um, we knew going in that there would be a lot of spin mm -hmm. on both sides. And our job, or Drew's job, I should say, was to weave through all that spin and really just report the facts, but we wanted to do it in a balanced way, mm -hmm. where we got the Department of Education, we got the people from, from the vision, we got the people from Race to the Top, but we also talked to teachers and, and the teachers union, of course. Um, it was a lot of work, but I believe we came up with a balanced piece. Mm -hmm. and, and no matter how balanced you think a piece is, there's always gonna be tons of passion and emotion when it comes to education. Have you found that to be true in terms of feedback? Oh yeah, we've <laughs> gotten more feedback on this story than we have in a, in a, in a long time mm -hmm. for, for many of our stories. Uh, some uh, letters are, uh, some people are angry with us that, uh, in fact, one teacher said, you know, how dare you tell us how to 
to run a school. We don't tell you how to run a magazine. Um, others are very supportive of the story mm -hmm. saying, thank you for offering a balanced report. I actually welcome the critical letters. I think they're interesting to read. I, I welcome criticism because it only makes you better. But the point is, it's, it's gotten some buzz. It's mm -hmm. created a buzz and the point was to start a discussion because that's really what needs to happen. And the bottom line is no matter what side you're on, the goal is the same. We want to have great schools. We want to have great schools, but is Race to the Top going to get us to this world-class promise that it alleged to have done? I mean, mm -hmm. uh, we were promised world-class results. Not only good results, but Delaware was going to be the best in the country. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not happened after four years. So we have to look at it. We have to ask why. Mm -hmm. That's what we tried to do. All right, Maria, guess what? We're out of time. Uh. <laughs> Maria, thank you so much. Editor-in-Chief at Delaware Today Magazine.